Um, so now while Kathleen's coming up, I'm going to introduce her. Um, Kathleen McMahon is our next speaker, and I do promise it's almost lunchtime. And Kathleen is a senior software engineer at O'Reilly Media, and she's a designer and developer and is very passionate about making beautiful and accessible websites. And yeah. in her spare time, she wields a serious GIF game, and she gave clear instructions to say GIF with a hard G. If you disagree, you can argue with her later. She is also creative director for Cross Sisters Network and is the best Lantern Rouge cyclocrosser you've ever met. She will tell you more about that in a minute. I also learned that she has not once but twice traveled cross country with several cats. And I'm gonna call that Adventures with Cats. Yes. So yeah. Kathleen. You can ask me about that later. <laughs> Make sure everything's on. Ah, mic is on. Clicker is on. Okay, so hi. As she said, my name is Kathleen McMahon, and I'm here today to tell you the story about how Gatsby and MDX helped us make our React component library documentation smoothly inclusive. Before we begin, let me get some details out of the way since this talk is, my notes are not showing, so this should be interesting. Um, we'll figure it out. Since my talk is short, and I wanna be kind to the live captioners in the room, my slide deck will be posted up on Noticed after the event. It, the URL for that is https colon slash slash noti.st slash resource11. You can also follow me, and this is why, this is why I hit the back button. So, you can also follow me at Resource11 on Twitter, Instagram, and GitHub. Before we dig into the details, let's back up just a second so I can introduce myself better. I am the tech lead for O'Reilly Media's design system, and I race bikes very, very badly. Uh, mostly you'll see me in costume, racing two laps to your six at the back of a pack on a single speed because Racing and costume is exciting. What's more, even more exciting is working on a design system and dinosaurs that flip into pools. And so design systems are awesome, especially if you're working on rebooting your system. If you've never worked on a design system before, let's just say there are a lot of moving parts. And if your core team is small, like ours, around three to four people, you really have to choose your focus, and you have to really rely on your contributors. In our case, our focus for our system was take the business logic out, add the accessibility in, we fixed our colors first, our components, our patterns, and we rebooted our docs. Once we did that, we realized that we had a problem. Part of our system was becoming a hindrance to our team and a barrier to entry for our contributors. That was our documentation. Our process was spread across two projects, our design system repo and our docs repo. In the design system repo, we had our documentation content stored in two separate locations. In our docs repo, we would host our, um, our site staff scaffolding and the scripts and some components. To get up and running with our system, you had to follow a detailed series of steps to sync, run scripts, grab the files, parse the information with DocGen and Cheerio and all the other stuff, generate the data, render the docs, and into a React app. Phew. So, um, if you are new to this system, I could say it's a little bit of an overwhelming experience, and, but wait, there's more. So, our scripts were set up in a way that you had to write your markdown in a very specific order for your content to actually show up in the docs. So your, uh, like for example, this button example, you could have your button paired with a paragraph, but only one paragraph. Same with your variants, one paragraph, intro paragraph, and one code block. Best practices had to be writ written as an unordered list, always. Same with our related components section. They had to be written as an unordered list. If you see on the page here, it looks like those best practices are in, are in paragraphs, but you had to write it in a certain way. 
So we realized that our, while our doc script and our process was great for generating things like color swatches and um, details about which props were available for your components, it was not really great, especially for our component documentation, which frustrated all of us. That is me, cats. <laughs> so one mistake, parts, if not whole chunks of your documentation would be missing from your component pages. We had the freedom of using Markdown, but we weren't taking advantage of it. And this is a serious cognitive lift. I mean, even if you're very familiar with the code base, imagine if you have a new contributor to your project. It's not exactly making a welcome experience, ex welcoming experience for us. All the penguins are running away. So what went, what went, what went wrong here? We had to decide to look back at our process and see what wasn't working. We discovered our biggest issue, this section right here, our example section. We were cho choosing to sh show one component variant at a time, rather than all at once. We were gathering all our data up, parsing it and plopping it into a select. We were forcing our users to access a select menu over and over again to compare the differences between variants, which increased the time anyone needed to look up information. It was not great for usability. It's not great if you had a cognitive disability. And in, ge in general, it just didn't make sense. On reflection, it, the decision that we to do that was about as questionable as a recipe that combines Jello and shellfish. Yeah, <laughs> not, not a fan. We decided it was time to make our docs contrib contribution process a little more user friendly in terms of structure and how we authored especially the component example pages. We wanted our contributors to have the confidence that whatever content they wrote in a docs page would show up into that docs page. That way, if we made our docs more user friendly, we'd have more contributors rather than fewer ones. So we had to find a solution. We considered many options to make our docs better and we decided upon Gatsby for a few reasons. One, Gatsby gave us a way to migrate all our main documentation pages right into the site without much fuss. Two, Gatsby provides a Webpack and Babel config similar to Create React app. So we could start with a scaffolded project and extend it for our needs. And three, Gatsby supports MDX. So we can write component documentation using Markdown, import React components right in the file, and it just works. Even better, MDX will compile down into semantic HTML, which in turn gives your site improved accessibility, better support for your users that rely on assistive technology to access your docs. And just because you're, you know, you're, our users are our developers, so that's still developer experience, and it's also user experience here. You're making that experience better for everyone here. Yoraima Estevez is going to be talking later today about general component accessibility, and it's a really good talk, so I suggest you check her out. That said, if your design system is promoting inclusivity in general, it follows that having inclusive docs makes sense. As a bonus, we could streamline our, our, our doc setup from one repo, from two repos to one, and reduce the amount of CLI commands we had to use dramatically, like from eight to three. The default setup for Gatsby is great. However, we need to make some adjustments to our, our project so Gatsby can work for our needs. First, we work in the Gatsby config file. Everything here, all the code samples will be shared up on Noticed, so don't worry about writing anything down. We'll have full examples up later on. In the config file, we have to add the Gatsby plugin post CSS plugin because we use post CSS in our CSS files. We're using CSS modules in our documentation. We add Gatsby plugin compile ES6 packages because we are importing our design system components and they use ES6. We're adding Gatsby plugin MDX so our site will recognize MDX files and use a page template there. We point to that. And we are using especially Gatsby remark auto link headers as a sub plugin to Gatsby MDX we also import it earlier in the files to, to have it recognized. The purpose of this is to generate auto links for our headers. This way we'll have better screen reader 
and keyboard support. We'll be able to share those little links with the little broken link icon there. You can share that and paste URLs, send, send them to your users, and they don't have to like, scroll halfway down the page to find their information. You find them a link, they can pass it in, or they can tab right to these things. So we have keyboard focusable links throughout your site with this tool, which is really great. We add the Black Gatsby plugin page creator, so we can pay, create pages from that source pages folder. And lastly, in the config file, we add the Gatsby plugin file system plugin, so we can have access to the um, folder that contains our data file, and especially the folder that contains where our component documentation files live, because we keep our component documentation at the same, in the same location as the components themselves to keep it more, our architecture more, have more of a separation of concerns. In our Gatsby node file, we add a GraphQL query to look for all the files that are MDX files and grab all the component, the body of that component MDX content. Then we create a, a page query, uh, create page action in the node file to generate the routes, point to the correct template, because we're using a separate, separate template for the component examples, and pass in that, um, the page child MDX body that we grabbed from that GraphQL query above. The Gatsby browser file needs a few things. Since this file, most importantly, is used to make changes at the site-wide level. We add things to, um, we're going to add our um, global CSS styles at the top, and we're adding this wrap root element component that we've created. This element will act as a wrap around our site's root element and allows, and we, in here we import the MDX provider. That way, the entire site will recognize MDX content that is being grabbed from, the, from MDX pages. We have to do one extra thing in our component docs page template, though. We have to bring in an MDX renderer from um, MDX JS slash React, um, and we wrap that inside the contents inside our article element here. We do that because in this layout, um, it's pulling from pages that are located different in a different location than our source pages folder. So we have to use that MDX renderer for our content to show up. Otherwise, if we didn't use an MDX renderer um, wrapper, our files would look like this. So if you add the renderer inside your layout, you get this instead. So you have exactly what your MDX is showing, it's rendering on the page, which is what we want. Now you can now, with MDX, you can pop components next to your code blocks, and they will render, no problem. You can even wrap your button components with a display box component. And you can have a more cohesive look of your component code block pairings to keep everything visually um, concise. If we want to add a props table, to show which props can be used which, with whichever component, we are going to leverage our data from our data file. We're going to pass that into a, um, into a table inside a custom component. And all we have to do in our MDX is pull in that component and tell it which component props table to render. And voila, you will get a nicely formatted props table in your docs. For, the, for component do's and don'ts, you can write out unordered list in your MDX file, and that list will render. It's pretty cool, and that's, um, that's accessible because it will be great, great for screen, screen readers. But if you want something to look a little bit nicer, you can create a custom component that renders unordered list for you, bring in a um, component guidelines component into um, your MDX, pass in a do's list and a don'ts list, and you can get a nicely formatted do's and don'ts list right into your component example pages. My favorite part of this whole thing is custom code blocks. And this is, this is a result of a, um, this whole next series is a result of a live stream with Jason Langstorm of Learn with Jason, which was inspired by me stalking <laughs> Chris Biscardi's blog posts because they're just so good. Um, he had a blog post on MDX and code blocks. And um, I wanted to see what we could do with this. So Markdown has a great has great code block support, but when you have MDX files, 
you have a lot more power with your code blocks. You can override the styling of a code block in MDX with a custom code block or even display different types of code blocks. It is super cool. You can bring in things like Prism React Renderer in a custom code block component, import a theme, and you can add decent color contrast to your code blocks. So if you have something like this, this is grabbed from um, Prism React Renderer. This is an example of how to wrap your pre and you theme it. What you do is you grab this component and you pass it in to your wrap root element. You import it in there with, the, with also this pre to code block hooks created by MDX Utils, thanks Chris. Um, and what you do is you, um, you are creating a, com a component object and in the pre, if someone passes in the prop next to the, the code blocks language tag, we will render the code block. Otherwise, um, just don't customize the pre tag at all. And we make sure that we pass in um, the components prop in there so we have the scope of the components passed into the provider. And because this is wrapping the whole, um, your whole app, if you write something like this now, code block and MDX, instead of this baseline styling, you will get this, syntax highlighting. It's pretty great. That's because we would override things. But even better, if you pass in a separate prop to that code block, you can do some really excellent things. For example, this here is not a very dry pattern. We're wrapping our button in a display box and pairing it with a code block. We could make this drier by wrap, extra, extracting this out into its own component and pop it in here where into our code block component. And if someone passes in the display box props, it will render the display box with the component paired with that prism syntax highlighting. So now you can write this instead of that and get that. And what if you want your code block to be editable? Hello React Live. You can add React Live as a dependency and add that into that code block component as an option. And you can show that component inside a display box pairing with editable code block. So now if you add this, you will have editable code block and see your changes in real time. So if you write something like this where we have, you could write this in your documentation where you want your first code block to show React Live, the second one just to be code block, and the third one to be a, a static um, code block with a component and a wrapper. You can see this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here and figure out where my mouse goes. There it is. OK. Here it is. So that's live. That's with syntax highlighting. This is Blazebop. What is great about this is for people that want to just, there we go. If you do something wrong, they have error handling, which is awesome. You can make it a tertiary button. Cool. I can also, if I want, I can say, so you can start testing things out. And I can also spell some days, All right? So, sera. Uh, <laughs> As you can see, you can edit things live. This is great for developers that want to start playing with the different props in here in real time. So this is a really cool option that you can do with code blocks. And I am so in love with MDX and like all the spec of like ASD and HDSD and MDAS and all this other stuff underneath that I, I need to learn more. But you can do these things. So to wrap up, back to my slides. Anytime now. There we go. So back to my slides. If your documentation setup is brittle, your users will flee like the penguins. But if you use Gatsby and MDX, you can make your docs more exclusively smooth, and your users will come back. And eventually, they'll be very happy to contribute to your design system and to be part of your team. Thank you. <laughs>